We begin with logic and first we ask, what is a statement? Well, the answer here is it's a declarative sentence and typically, typically it's about math, but we will see some that is not always. It's a declarative sentence that is either true or false. but not both and sort of unambiguously true or false. And so let's look at some examples. First, we'll figure out are they statements? And if so, true or false? Here are one, two, three, four, five, six different examples. And as I said, question number one, is it a statement? Question number two, well, if it is a statement, is it true or false? Here's the first one, two plus one, squared is two squared plus one squared. Is that a statement? Well, yes, you're declaring something and it's either true or false. In fact, it's false. This is nine and this is um, five. Okay, so it's false, but this is yes, statement. It happens to be false. Okay, the current year is 2014. Am I making a declarative statement? Well, this one's not about math per se, but it is a statement. You're declaring something and it's also false. Okay. Here, X is less than eight. Is this a statement that is either true or false? Well, the problem here is not in the word declarative because you're declaring something. The problem is that it's not either true or false. Um, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's false. It just depends what X is. For instance, if X is five, five is less than eight would be a statement and that's true. Or if X is 27, 27 is less than eight is a statement and it's false. But with this variable here, this is not a statement. because the truth is um, ambiguous. Maybe I should write it this way. No, it's not a statement. The truth is ambiguous. Okay. Now here, be kind. Well, we should. Kindness makes the world go round. But is this a statement? No, this is a command. You're not declaring anything. So this is no, this is a command. It's not declarative. Okay, is this a statement? This says the set one, two and a half. The set containing these three elements is, is a subset of Q. Yeah, this is a statement. And this is important to understand that a statement, a sentence, it can be with symbols. This is, with symbols, but it reads fine. It's a statement. You're saying this set is a subset of Q. So this is a statement and it happens to be true because every element here is a rational number. And finally here, I want one, two, a half intersect Q. Well, that's not a statement. Um, it's not a statement because well, this is just a set. It's not a statement. It's not a sentence. Okay. Quite often we use the letters P, Q, and R for statements. You might see them as capital letters. You might also see them as lowercase letters. But just as an example, we could have P to be well, if I said X is less than five, it wasn't a statement, as I mentioned, but I can change it. And now I can make the statement 10 is less than five. This is a statement. It happens to be false or maybe Q. Let's see, what else can I change? Ah, we had this Q intersect one, two and a half. This alone is not a statement, as I mentioned, but if I said it equal to something, well, here, 
This is now a statement and it happens to be true. It's a true statement. Q intersect this set is equal to this set. This is a statement. And then another example, perhaps we will just say um, 17 is even. And this is a statement and it is false, okay? So these are three examples of statements. Just as I was saying, this one is false, this one is true, and this one is false, but all three are statements. Now, what we would like to do, we will combine statements using connectives. Now, we have a number of connectives to talk about. The first three we will talk about will be the and, the or, and the not. Um, and then we will have some more than just this, but these are the first three. Now, um, when people speak, say not in a mathematical sense, just casually, people will not be so precise with their language. And it's usually not a problem if you're speaking just with someone not about math. But mathematically, we must be very precise in everything that we say. And that's part of the goal of the course is to teach you to write in sentences and speak and communicate precisely with mathematics. So we need to, as a first step, really understand precisely what the and, the or, and the not are. Okay, first let me um, write some notation underneath and then we will define each of these connectives. Okay, so the notation for the and is like this, for the or, is like this and the not well what is most common for the not is this okay but i will just mention our book uses a different one which is also for the not so or you could also see like this so either one of these you might see for the not and you might see me use either one of these for the not in this semester. I will try to match the text every time I use the not. If you see this one sometimes, okay, this is also, in fact, this is more common, but this is also for the not, okay? Now, what are these? Let's define them now. Let's start with the and. Here P and Q are statements. P and Q, this is true only when both P and Q are true. So, for example, if I have P is that 5 plus 3 is 8, Q is that minus 14 is an element of N, well, P and Q is false because, well, P is true, but Q is false. So the and is false. The only time the and is true is if both P and Q are true. We can describe a compound statement using what's called a truth table. And this is where you have the input. You can think of them as variables, but the input statements. And then in this case, we just have this connective and we put in all possibilities. So P is a statement, it can be true or false. Q is a statement, it can be true or false. So we need to feed in all these possibilities. And then this goes true, false, true, false. And then we will, in a way, you can define the and or any of the connectives we discuss by just listing the truth of this statement, this compound statement P and Q um, for all the possibilities. And if you read, as we discussed, 
is true only when both P and Q are true and the AND is false every other time. So this is a truth table. It gives us precisely, I will say, the definition of P and Q. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the OR, P or Q. Well, here, P or Q, this is true when, while P is true, or Q is true, or both are true. Now, this is where you have to think, um, really, this is, this can happen, and the or is true. You really have to think, because in English, when we're speaking sort of casually, as I said, I could say, well, today I will go to the supermarket, or I will go to the art museum. And if I say or like that, it seems like I'm gonna do one or the other, so that if I came home with groceries, my son could guess, oh, must not have gone to the art museum because you went to the supermarket, right? So lots of times if you say I'll do this or I'll do that, you don't really mean the possibility that you're gonna do both of them. But the or, this, in logic, it's true when P is true, Q is true, or when they're both true. So the truth table here looks like this. It's true, true, true. And then the only time the or is false is if they're both P and Q are false. Okay, this is the truth table for the or. Now, going back to this example, we saw, maybe I'll write it again here, P and Q was false, but P or Q is true. And just this one was, of course, true. This one was false. So the or is true, but here the and is false. Okay. So, so far we have the and, we have the or, and I can fit the not down here. The not takes in only one statement, and so this would be, for example, not P. Okay, this is the notation of the text. As I mentioned, you would also see not P like this. And this is, this just has the, the opposite truth of P. This has the opposite truth of the statement P. So if P is true, not P is false. If um, P is false, not P is true. So we only have two input here because there's only one input statement and it's just like this, okay? This is the not when P is true, not P is false. When P is false, not P is true, just like this. Okay, so, so far we've talked about the and, the or, and the not. And now let's do a few examples using them. Here are four examples. We will determine each one of these, whether it's true or false. And here we have P of X is the sentence that X is bigger than zero. Q of X is the sentence that X over five is an integer. And just as we discussed moments ago, without anything else, P of X is, um, well, it's a declarative sentence, but it's, it's ambiguous as to whether it's true or false because it depends on x, and similarly with q of x. But as soon as I, for instance here, um, evaluate at two or some number, then it becomes a statement and that it has a true, it has a truth. It's either true or false. So, for instance, this says two is positive or eight over five is an integer, right? That's how we read this. And we wanna decide if it's true or false. So I will put a little work on top of this as we discuss, then I will circle the correct final answer. P of two, um, two is bigger than zero. This is a true statement. Q of eight is a false statement. Then we have an or. So the first one is true. Okay, 
Now, well, we have P of two and Q of eight, then we have a naught, and parentheses are important here. So, P of two, well, this is from above, this is true, this is false, okay? And then we and, so this part, the and, is false. Then we negate, okay, the not. This whole expression is true. Now for the third one, P of one, okay, this also is true. One is bigger than zero. Then Q of two, Q of two itself, just this is false. Two over five is not an integer. When I negate it, this larger part here, this is true with the negation, then I have an and, and when you have true, true, that's the only time the and is true. Okay, we have a lot of true statements on this board. Okay, true, true, true. Well, don't just guess true on the last one. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, we have to think. P of minus four, um, this is definitely false. Minus four is not positive, okay? Then, well, first I'll look here. Q of minus 10, minus 10 over five is minus two. This is an integer, so this part is true, but then I negate it, so this larger one is false. Now I have false with an or and another false. That's the only time an or can be false is when you have two falses. So this last one is false. And these were compound statements that used or, and, and not. Another way to combine statements is called the conditional statement. It's also called an implication. And we are given P, Q statements just as before. The notation here, you will really see both of these. I typically use this single arrow and quite often the book uses this double arrow. But in any case, this is the implication. This is red. If P, then Q or it can be read that P implies Q. Uh, there are other ways, many other ways you can state this. When is this true? Maybe I will start with a truth table for the implication. We have P, we have Q, and then we have P implies Q. P and Q can both be either true or false. Now, the implication. It's only false one time. The only time it's false is when P is true and Q is false. The implication is false. And every other possible time, it is true. Okay? If P, then Q, is true when any time P is false. And this is an important thing to understand. If we go back to these two statements, five plus three is eight. This is a true statement. Minus 14 is a natural number. This is a false statement. P implies Q is false. But Q implies P is true because Q is false. And I would say one thing that students tend to struggle with um, is understanding why if P then Q is true here anytime the P statement is false. Okay? So. Maybe let's do an example to help us think about this. It's a lot of words, but you can just listen as I talk about it. So, Mateo says to Sean, if we are roommates, then I will cook every day. You see, this is an implication. Here's the P 
pee and then I will cook every day as the Q. This would be P and Q, okay? So the question is, and we're trying to, as I mentioned, really understand these, these two cases where P is false, but the implication is true. The question is, when is Mateo not telling the truth? When can you say, hey, that's, you didn't tell the truth, okay? So we really have four possibilities. One is that Mateo and Sean are roommates and Mateo cooks every day, and that's fine. The if we are roommates, then I will cook every day. Mateo is telling the truth, okay? This one's okay. We could also have this possibility. Mateo and Sean are roommates and Mateo does not cook every day. And then definitely you could say, well, Mateo, this statement was not true. You were not telling the truth there. So here, not telling the truth. So far, if we think about our truth table, we've thought about the first two rows, really. Let's look at these last two. Well, Mateo and Sean are not roommates, and Mateo cooks every day. Can you say this, is, this was a lie? Well, no, they're not roommates. So this if part never happened. You can't say that it was a lie, right? And finally, similarly here, Mateo and Sean are not roommates, and Mateo does not cook every day. Okay, that's fine. Both of these, the if part, it never happened. This part, the P, it never happened. And so, there's really nothing to even check on the other end. And this is why this one, if you start with P false, P implies Q will be true, whether Q is true or if Q is false, okay? We will end today with these three examples. We have these compound statements, and we'll decide if each one is true or false. And throughout this, P is the statement that two plus two is three. Q is the statement that the empty set is a subset of the integers, and R is the statement that the empty set is an element of the integers. So the first thing to do is just write the truth of each of these underneath. This is without a doubt false. This is true, the empty set is a subset of every set. And this is false, the empty set is not an element of the integers. Okay, now let's start with this one. First we have a P and Q. Well, P is false. Q is true, the and is false. Now, it doesn't even matter what's over here on this side. It happens that R is false, okay? But whether R was true or false, because this is false, the implication would be true. Okay, now the next one, we have not P implies Q and R. Not P is true. And let's see, Q is true, R is false, and then we have an and, so this statement is false. Now, we have a T followed by an F with an implication. This is the only time an implication is false. So here, this one, false. And now the final one for today, P, or R implies P or Q. Well, P is false, R is also false, and we are oring, and so this is false. It's the only time the or is false is when both are false. Well, kind of like in this first one, we have false implies, really no matter the truth of this, the implication will be true, but we can figure this out just as an exercise. P is false, Q is true, and it's an or, so this is true. So we have a false implies true. This is true, okay? Thank you.